Here we're gonna evaluate a nice little limit using a result that is tied to the ratio test and the root test from testing series for convergence. So we wanna look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of n factorial over n. We're gonna use two main tools. The first is like a standard limit representation of the natural base for an exponent e, and that's the limit as n goes to infinity of one plus one over n to the n equals e. So we'll show this just for completeness. And then next is this um, nice result regarding this ratio of members of a sequence versus the root of members of a sequence. So we have if a n is bigger than zero for all n and the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus one over a n and the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of a n both exist and are finite then they must be equal okay so let's go ahead and prove this first and then we'll move on to the second one so how i want to do this is we'll start by setting the limit of this equal to l so we have l equals the limit as n goes to infinity of one plus one over n to the n and notice that as n goes to infinity this guy inside of the parentheses goes to one and then the exponent goes to infinity so this is an indeterminate form of type one to the infinity and so generally to evaluate these types of indeterminate forms you pass to a logarithm so let's do that so now we have the natural log of the limit is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of now we have n times the natural log of one plus one over n now here we just use the logarithm fact that it will bring an exponent down as a multiplier now if we zoom in on this, notice that as n goes to infinity, n goes to infinity, and then this thing goes to the natural log of one, which is zero. So now we've transformed this into an indeterminate form of type infinity times zero. And that's really close to the type that we can apply L'Hopital's rule to. So here we have, this is the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of one plus one over n over one over n. So that's like kind of our standard trick. Um, and now notice this is of type um, zero over zero. So we've got it all set for L'Hopital's rule. Now I'm gonna do something kind of subtle, but it's not super necessary as long as you know what's going on. And that is I'm gonna pass this from a discrete variable to a continuous variable. So I'm gonna write this is the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of one plus one by x over one over x. Notice that's still an indeterminate form, but now we have a continuous limit, which means we can apply L'Hopital's rule by taking the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. You can't necessarily do that until you have a continuous variable. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So using L'Hopital's rule, we need to take the derivative of the numerator. So that's gonna be one over one plus one over x times negative one over x squared. Great, and let's sneak a limit in here. So we have the limit as x goes to infinity. And then the denominator, the limit of the derivative of that will be minus one over x squared. Now notice that these minus one over x squared terms cancel, and we're taking the limit as x goes to infinity of one over one plus one over x, and so that's gonna give us one because notice it gives us one over one plus zero. But that's the natural log of our goal limit. So in other words, we have the natural log of our goal limit is equal to one, which means our goal limit is equal to e, the natural base for the exponential function. Okay, so we've got this first tool taken care of, and now we're ready to move on to the second. And we'll do this using the epsilon n definition of a limit, as well as the squeeze theorem. So let's go ahead and suppose that each of these limits exist, and let's give a name to one of the limits. We'll give a name to this limit of the quotient here. So let's go ahead and set the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus one over a sub n equal to L. So what that means is for any epsilon bigger than zero, there is some natural number n. So we're thinking about epsilon being super small and this n being pretty sizable such that if little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, 
we have the nth term of this sequence is as close to L as epsilon. So in other words, we have a n plus one over a n is between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. So sometimes this is written slightly differently. Sometimes this is written as the absolute value of a n plus one over a n minus L is less than epsilon, but this is like an equivalent um, kind of compound inequality instead of an absolute value inequality, which will be helpful for our purposes here. Now what we want to do is notice that this is true for all n bigger than or equal to n. So that means that I can scale this down all the way until we're at this capital N. So let's go ahead and do that. So the next one underneath this will be a n over a n minus one is between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. And then the one below that will be a n minus one over a n minus two is between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. And then all the way down. And so we want to stop at a sub capital N. So we have a sub capital N plus one over a sub capital N. So that's again between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. Fantastic. But now what we want to do is take the product of all of these inequalities. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do the product of all of these inequalities. And notice since all of the parts here are positive, we maintain the direction of the inequalities. And you might uh, say, well, how many of these do I have? Well, I have exactly little n plus one minus big N. And you can count that from kind of the starting point to that um, ending point right there. So let's see what that's going to give us. That's going to give us L minus epsilon to the little n plus one minus capital N. So that's going to be on the left hand side of the inequality. Then in the middle of the inequality, notice a bunch of stuff is going to cancel. Notice that this a n is going to cancel with this a n when we take that product. This a n minus one with this a n minus one, this a n minus two with something before, or after I should say, and this a n plus one with something before. So all we're left with is this a sub little n plus one and a sub capital N. So that means we can put here a sub little n plus one over a sub capital N. And then we have something similar to the left hand side on the right hand side. Um, in particular, we have L plus epsilon to the n plus one minus n. Okay, great. So now what I wanna do is I'll clean up this kind of stuff that we have and I'll bring this over and we'll continue the next step. So in the last word, we ended with the following inequality. So we have L minus epsilon to the quantity N plus one minus N is less than A sub little N plus one over A sub capital N, which is less than L plus epsilon to that same exponent N plus one minus N. So now what we wanna do is isolate that a sub n plus one and see what we get from there. So here we're going to have um, L minus epsilon to the n plus one over L plus epsilon to the capital N and then times a n. So notice I rewrote this a little bit and then multiplied by the capital a n. And then here we have that's less than a n plus one, which is less than. Now I'm going to do the same kind of thing here. So we've got L plus epsilon to the n plus one over L minus epsilon to the capital N, and then we have A sub N. So that, that should be L plus epsilon. Fantastic. Now what we want to do is take the N plus first root of all parts of the inequality. And we're motivated to do that because that's what we're trying to get at is the limit of this nth root of the A N term. But if we do the N plus first root of the A N plus one term, that's essentially the same thing. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So taking the n plus first root of this, notice we have an L minus epsilon, so that's nice kind of on its own. And then we have the n plus first root of A sub n over L plus epsilon to the n. Great. And then here we have the n plus first root of A n plus one. And now this is gonna be um, L plus epsilon, and then the n plus first root of a n over L plus epsilon to the capital N. Okay, great. Now let's maybe put this in parentheses. 
Now we're ready to do the squeeze theorem. So now let's go ahead and take the limit of all parts of this as little n approaches infinity. So notice as little n approaches infinity, the n plus first root of anything will go to one. So we won't prove that, but that's kind of a result that would occur earlier in the class than this. So if we let n go to infinity, that's gonna go to one. If we let n go to infinity, that's gonna go to one as well which tells us we have L minus epsilon is less than the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus first root of a sub n plus one, which is less than L plus epsilon. But now a statement like this is true for all epsilon, but whenever a statement like this is true for all epsilon bigger than zero, that gives you the exact value of your limit. So in other words, this tells us that the limit as n approaches infinity of the n plus first root of a sub n plus one equals L, which is exactly what we wanted to show because we wanted that to be equal to this ratio limit. Okay, so now we've got this second tool taken care of, and now we're ready for our final goal, which is this limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of n factorial over n. So I guess in order to be very careful, you should probably show that this limit exists first. But notice all of the terms are positive, which means that it's bounded below by zero. And furthermore, you can show that this is decreasing by induction pretty easily. And then by the monotone sequence theorem, this thing converges. So since this thing converges, if we can write it either as a quotient or a root, we can use this result that we just proved. And this root right here tells us we probably want to write the whole thing as a root and then rewrite it as this quotient type thing. So let's go ahead and do that. So notice I can rewrite this as the limit as n tends towards infinity. And now I have the nth root of n factorial in the numerator and then the nth root of n to the n in the denominator. Okay, great. Well, so obviously the nth root of n to the n is just n, so I've helped myself out there. So that allows me to rewrite this as the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of n factorial over n to the n. And so here we're playing our game from this second tool where this n factorial over n to the n is our a sub n term. So now this tool says that our limit in question should be the same as the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus one over a sub n. So let's go ahead and write that down. So this should be equal to the limit as n tends towards infinity. So let's look at a sub n plus one. That's gonna be n plus one factorial over n plus one to the n plus one all over. So that big numerator there is a sub n plus one. And then this is gonna be all over n factorial over n to the n. Now I'm gonna rewrite this so like terms are on top of each other, so like factorials I consider as like terms, and then the exponents are the other type of like terms. So let's see what that gives us. That's gonna give us this limit as n tends towards infinity of, so we'll have n plus one factorial over n factorial, and then uh, next, we'll have n to the n over n plus one to the n plus one. Again, that's putting the like type terms on top of each other. So let's see how we can simplify here. So here I wanna use the fact that if we have n plus one factorial, we can decompose that into n plus one times n factorial. So that's a standard trick. And now we can cancel this n factorial with this n factorial. And furthermore, we can cancel this n plus one with the plus one part of this right here. So that leaves us with n to the n over n plus one to the n. So that's kind of nice. So let's see what we have. We have the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n plus one all to the n. Here, I just brought that exponent out of the whole thing. Okay, great. Now this, almost looks like our tool right here, and it will be exactly this tool if we use uh, an algebraic property of limits involving a quotient of a limit. And we can do that. Notice that's gonna be the same thing as one over the limit as n goes to infinity of the reciprocal of this thing, 
which is n plus 1 over n all to the nth power. Again, this is an algebraic property of limits, which is pretty standard. But now that gives us 1 over, we have the limit as n tends towards infinity of 1 plus 1 by n to the n after simplifying that guy right there. But let's see what we've got. That is our first tool, which we showed to be equal to e. So our final answer is 1 over e. OK, great. So while this part of the calculation didn't use any like fancy analysis type stuff, it was just like symbolic manipulation. And our first calculation was also like a calculus type uh, calculation. Notice we had to use something that looked like real analysis from this second tool. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I have a whole playlist that is in the process of being built um, about real analysis for my upcoming class that I'm teaching this fall. Okay, that's a good place to stop.